What's going on guys? Welcome back to Resurrect. Today I wanted to talk to you about Sprinter vans. Now I own a Sprinter van. This is a vehicle that I bought from a salvage auction several years ago and I use it for a mobile technical service that I have uh, and I also use it to move parts for other projects um, <clears throat> when I'm buying large parts. So it's been a great van. Uh, it's been really reliable. I have 150,000 miles on this van and it's uh, 2008 so it's over 10 years old but it's been rock solid um, and it has a diesel engine. This is the V6 3.0 diesel. Now this van, uh, its configuration, it's pretty much the same until present day. So from about 2007 till the current van uh, in 2019, all those vans pretty much share the same chassis and engine for the most part. So uh, a common problem though with these vans is the diesel injectors uh, and they are known for a problem um, that's known as Black Death. And uh, it sounds kind of crazy, but it's really a very simple problem. But basically what happens is the diesel injectors, they start leaking diesel fluid on the top of the engine. And that uh, diesel fluid turns into like a carbon buildup and it gets very hard. And what happens is eventually um, you're going to hear air escaping through the diesel injector. So the engine's going to sound terrible. Um, and then when you go to fix it and you want to pull the injectors out to reseal them, it's going to be very difficult. Those injectors are gonna be really stuck in the engine. So I wanna show you guys or anybody who's working on these types of vans, some tips and tricks that uh, help me with this job um, if you're trying to DIY this job yourself. So let me show you that right now. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys a little video clip of what it sounds like um, when you have air bypassing the injector seals and you'll kind of know what it sounds like but I kind of learned the hard way um, every hundred thousand miles you're supposed to do the injector seals and I didn't do it and I've got to 150,000 miles and this job became a real pain in the butt so um, just to let you know I, I started this video I'll show you some clips of uh, me doing the job but you're gonna have to remove this air box um, you're gonna have to remove this uh, this uh, hose right here, as well as the engine covers, there's three. Um, but before you remove this engine cover here, you're gonna wanna at least loosen this pipe and move it over. Um, and as well as uh, there's uh, some other uh, hardware that's kind of in the way here. If you don't move that out of the way and you try to wiggle this engine cover out, you might end up breaking a fuel line or a, an injector. And you don't wanna do that because these injectors are pretty expensive, new, they're about $400. So you wanna be really careful with these injectors. Um, and a lot of the plastic is very brittle after 100 or 150,000 miles, so you wanna be really careful. Um, you also probably have to remove this, uh, this uh, filler um, for the engine oil. But once you have all that out of the way, you'll be able to clearly see the injectors and the hoses and plumbing that go to the injectors. Alright guys, so just a few pointers before you get started on this job. Make sure you have everything to finish the job because once you disconnect the fuel lines and have that disconnected, uh, you might not be able to use this vehicle. So um, here's a few things that you might want to keep in mind. Um, some of the tools that I used, um, just to re remove the, uh, the oil lines, I know they recommend a special socket uh, and a torque wrench. I didn't torque mine, I just used a, um, a 17 and an 18 um, uh, crescent wrench here to remove the main uh, fuel lines to the fittings that go up top here but uh, I was very careful because uh, with this wrench if you're using a wrench and you hit this little uh, nipple up top you could snap this right off your injector so you just got to go real slow and careful uh, but you can use crescent wrench wrenches to tackle the job although it's probably not the right job for the tool or the right tool for the job um, then once you get uh, uh, there's a little bracket that holds the injector in. Uh, once you remove that, um, you can take a 13 millimeter crescent wrench and get it right on here. And if you want, you could try to wiggle this injector back and forth. And sometimes if it's not stuck, you can wiggle it and you can just lift on it and it'll pop right out. Now this one uh, did not work out that way. So we had to use uh, something else. But uh, the other thing too is when you're tackling the injector seals, um, the injector seals that go bad are these little copper rings that sit right here. Uh, on the injector. So you're going to want to get six of those um, for each injector. Um, you're going to want to get new bolts. These are the retaining bolts 
Um, they go into the, uh, there's a little retainer right here and there's a hole in the retainer. Uh, these bolts need to be torqued down to a specific torque. Um, I'll leave some of the information on that below, but uh, these bolts stretch. So um, if you try to reuse a bolt that's already stretched, you run the risk of snapping the bolt off in the hole and you don't want to do that. That's going to make this a very big job. So get yourself a set of six of these bolts. Um, I'll leave the part numbers for that in the description below. Um, and then you're going to want a T40 is uh, that fits perfectly into these bolts. And then the other thing that's recommended to be replaced, and I put it down here and it's so small, I can't even see, here it is, a very tiny little O-ring. Uh, I don't know if you could see that, but these little O-rings go on these nipples here. Um, this is for the oil leak line. Um, they sit right here. So you're gonna wanna replace all six of those. So six O-rings, six copper um, washers, and six bolts. Um, order all of that stuff from Mercedes. Um, and that's going to get these injectors sealed right. The oil leak line that sits on top of the injector, so you can see um, here's the uh, injector, and this plugs right into it. Now, if you don't know how to remove this, um, you can just sit there and scratch your head and be like, how do I get this thing off? So in order to remove this, take two index fingers, um, pull up on each side, maybe a, another set of fingers. You gotta take a lot of force, so just pull up on it, and once you do that, that unlocks it and then you could pull this right out. Um, before you get started on this job, if the vehicle is uh, older, 100,000 miles plus, be very careful with this. This plastic can get very brittle and it can snap. Um, I've done this job before and I was very careful with it and I broke it. So if you uh, think that there's a high probability that this could break, it might be a good idea to just go ahead and order one of these. You can get these from Mercedes for around $100 or you can get them aftermarket. I've seen them on eBay between 60 and 70 bucks um, from an aftermarket company. It might be a good idea to have one of these around because there's no guarantee somebody's gonna have this stuff locally. Uh, and if you snap it, it's gonna be leaking oil or leaking fuel profusely. Um, so that's one little tip. Uh, and the other tip I might give you when you start this job is it might be a good idea to have a backup injector um, if you have to order one from Mercedes, they're about four or five hundred dollars, um, and that's going to be your quickest option. Um, but you could pick these up used on eBay from Salvage Yards for about a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars. It might be a good idea to have one of these because if you end up snapping any of this stuff, um, your vehicle might be stuck for a little while. So just keep that in mind before you tackle this job. So I've had to pull injectors on a Sprinter van before, uh, and the times before I could typically either just wiggle them out or I could take a couple of screwdrivers and just gently pry up on the top of the plastic there and they would typically just come out. But these were not budging at all. And in fact, I pried so hard that I ended up snapping the plastic on one of the injectors. So you don't wanna do that. You really wanna have the right tool for the job. However, the right tool for the job, I looked up and they're very, very expensive. The ones I found come out of Germany and they're somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000. So, um, you need to find some type of aftermarket injector puller that will work right. Um, everything I saw on the internet didn't look like it would work. Um, so I found the closest thing I could find that would work and I gave it a shot, uh, but it really wasn't perfect. So I'm going to show you the tool that I ended up buying and I'm going to show you some of the modifications I made. And then I'm also going to show you guys how you could just make your own tool um, if you needed to, but you'll probably have to order some things online. Um, one of the fittings that I needed I definitely couldn't find locally. So let me show you what I came up with and hopefully this will help you guys do this job quicker uh, and be able to get it done without breaking anything. So here's a kit that I found on Amazon um, and it was Amazon Prime. So I was able to get this the next day. Um, I believe it ran me about a hundred bucks or 150, um, but I needed something quick because I needed to get this job done quickly. Um, and it does have fittings that attach to this injector. Um, the problem is though, is uh, in the engine compartment, um, it comes with this slide hammer and there's just not enough room um, to use this slide hammer. So the main reason though why I got that, a lot of the other aftermarket injector kits, it did seem like they had anything to thread onto the top of this injector. So um, what I did was when I bought this kit, there is one fitting that does fit on the top of this injector um, and it's this one right here. 
So this threads right to the top of the injector. And now you have a little fitting that you can attach to uh, to pull with. So what I did was I took a, a piece of Unistrut. Uh, and this is exactly six inches long. And then I have three holes uh, and then I use this center hole. And so what I did was I just put this right on top of the injector. And I cut an area out here to kind of fit over the injector because if I didn't cut this out, when I pull up, it would just probably smash some of this plastic here. But if you have it uh, lined up right, um, you essentially will have it sitting right there. You, this will sit right on top of the uh, uh, of the engine, and it'll there'll be two uh, areas where this just kind of rests on. And then you can take. Let's see. There was another fitting in here. Once you get it in position, it'll kind of be sticking up. And then you can just thread this on. And as you tighten it, it will pull the injector up. And now once the injector is up about maybe uh, an inch or so, then at that point you can twist the injector and you should be able to work its way out. Um, and so this is uh, one of the heavily fouled uh, injectors that I had. You can see all this black stuff. It's rock hard. It's the carbon deposits from the fuel from the diesel fuel um, getting baked on there. All this will come up. So if you uh, soak this in acetone or lacquer thinner uh, just for a minute and then brush it, um, this injector will look as good as new. Um, I tried not to get the acetone on the actual plastic parts because I know acetone will mess up certain plastics. Um, but you can see here, uh, it's just everywhere. I ended up damaging this injector by prying on it and I heard it crack. So at the time that you, uh, if you're ever prying on these injectors and it cracks, you're probably not going to want to use it because wherever it cracks, you're probably going to have um, diesel fuel leaking out at that point. So at that point, I just decided to replace the injector. But you want to be really careful when you're prying on these injectors. Um, so another thing I did too is I found a nut that worked with this fitting. Um, so you're going to have to use a, a, a few different things because um, depending on the clearance, like one of the injectors that I'll show you in the video clips, um, I did, I was able to use this slide hammer because this, uh, I couldn't get this to fit on there right. However, maybe with a couple of pieces of wood underneath it and a longer bolt, um, it would have worked fine. But this, this really works great. This is probably all you need. Uh, and then the only problem though, with making your own tool. So I'm going to set this aside. Um, if you have enough time uh, and you don't want to spend a hundred dollars on a kit from Amazon um, because this has a kind of a limited use for the, this vehicle. Uh, what you can do is get yourself some Unistrut, cut it down to size, notch it properly like this, um, and then you're going to need the right hardware. Now this is what you'll need. This is very difficult to find. Um, this is a uh, coupler that goes right onto the injector. Um, and the injector is a very uh, non-common thread. The thread is M14 with a 1.5 pitch. So I was able to find this on eBay, and I'll leave a link um, to the listing where I found this. But, but with this fitting, you can thread this right on each injector. And this was only like $8. And then at that point, you can throw this piece of Unistrut right over. And then you can get these bolts. I got these at Ace Hardware. Ace is pretty good about having metric hardware at least the one here locally is and uh, you can put it this right over and with a washer you can uh, thread I would get a few different lengths of these bolts this M14 by 1.5 uh, and get a few different lengths and then you can thread it in and then once you like I said before once you are able to kind of pull the injector up about an inch or so then the injectors will work itself out so all of this here can be had really cheap I mean this fitting was eight dollars um, this hardware was another 20 bucks and um, the Unistrut I had but I mean if you need to buy some Unistrut it's probably about 20 or 30 dollars so uh, you know roughly 50 bucks you can have yourself a functioning tool that will pull these injectors easily um, and you could use this in the future so way better than spending two thousand dollars on an injector puller uh, from Mercedes or a similar puller um, for Mercedes-Benz so um, that's what I came up with and hopefully that will save you guys some time
All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Hopefully any of these tips in this video today will help some people out there that are DIYing on their Sprinter vans, um, maybe trying to tackle this job. I hope this saves you some time and money. Um, and we're gonna have more future mechanical tips as, we're, as well as tips on body repairs uh, and other types of vehicle repairs and uh, flipping salvage cars. It's the main subject we talk about in this channel, but we'll also be doing um, other side uh, videos that kind of relate to mechanical and uh, automotive type uh, subjects. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And we'll see you next time.